Welcome back, everyone, to Vox Markets. My name is Paul, and I'm delighted again to be able to speak to uh, Jamie Constable of Singer, one of the UK's finest, and after his holiday, one of the most tanned capital markets experts in the city. So uh, welcome, Jamie. Good to see you again, Paul. Good to see you. I did pay for that. I had a quarantine when I came back. But anyway, it's all been going off while I've been away a bit, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the big uh, news over the last 24 hours has been the two inflation prints out in the States. Uh, and it's easy for the central bankers to um, say that these are isolated data points. But when you get a continuous line of them, as long as it's sort of around the block, then uh, even old duffers like me can see the trends. But uh, more importantly, what's your thoughts? Well, I think uh, you've hit the nail on the head there, Paul. Um, the longer it goes on, US at 5.4% yesterday, UK at 2.5%. The longer this goes on, the more it becomes entrenched in the economy and the more it becomes entrenched in consumer expectations. Mm. Uh, and then it, the chance of it going into wages, which is the key thing on inflation, uh, and, and which obviously means it's much less transitory then, which is obviously the central bank's favourite word at the moment, uh, the, the more that the more risk of that happening. So, But against that, we've had bond yields falling, which is somewhat perplexing, I think. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think they've come, the Treasuries have come down to 1.4%. Uh, and I did see a print on the US PPI this afternoon of over 7%. And you mm. just got to look around here with housing, house prices still going up, sort of like, you know, like for like, a sort of like high single digits, you know, sort of like, to, or, or even 10% from last month. Then that's going to get entrenched into rental, um, as in like, you know, rental prices for, for people who obviously um, you don't own their own property. And, and when you get that big slug, particularly in the large capitals, that's got to feed through to, you know, consumer requirements for a higher salary to cover their extra costs, which they've got no real control over. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I mean, house prices look well entrenched, to be, uh, mm. well underpinned, to be perfectly honest. I mean, if you go for a five year mortgage now, you just look in the papers at the weekend. I mean, five year HSBC, 1.09%. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I you can't see house prices coming off when you're giving it's all about this free money isn't it free money yeah. around the world and and i think that's the only way i can kind of rationalize what we're seeing in terms of bond yields falling u.s equities going up every day mm. is that there's so much free money in the world that uh, it has to find a way somewhere so yeah. as long as the central bankers have their feet to the floor uh, on the on the accelerator in terms of pumping the money in and and fiscal money as well of course you look at the u.s unemployment benefits still a couple more months of that to be paid out to people mm. while that's still coming into the system it has to find a way it has to find a home somewhere i saw a great chart actually which just said that perfectly illustrated it's in the u.s when you look at the junk yield um uh return or when you just, when you remove cpi against it typically over the last 20 years it's been a roughly around about five percent sort of like mm. premium uh, you know for, for, for real yields it's currently zero yeah. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and people basically are taking no real return for all that risk of default against junk bonds out in the states. It just says everything that there's too much liquidity sort of like swilling around. And so, but going forward, how is that sort of like going to change the, or is it going to change the central bankers out? What's, what's your view on sort of timings of tapering and interest rates out in the states? Because I think I mm. sort of. You know, they've got their Jackson Hole meeting coming up um, in August, and that will obviously be a big, um, a big announcement in terms of resetting expectations. Well, I think you've seen New Zealand overnight. They've virtually ended QE uh, mm. as from next week. Now, you, you, you might question why am I saying New Zealand, this small economy in the, uh, Pacific, in the Pacific, but actually New Zealand has tended to lead the world historically. It's a very open economy. It doesn't rugby. Quite, quite, <laughs> and it wins the rugby. Yeah, it's a very open economy. Um, and they uh, overnight have basically said, the central bank there, that they're going to end QE. And their interest rate futures have an interest rate rise, uh, prediction interest rate rise for November. Uh, Canada uh, are announcing over the next 24 hours, we, they could be next on the tapering. And basically, I think we've had, I've said this before, they should be tapering now, the central banks. I mean, they didn't raise interest rates when we post the 2009 financial crisis, and then they ended up with no firepower to cut rates going into the pandemic crisis. Yeah. Um, they need to start earlier, so they should be starting to taper. And I think that brings us to the UK equity market, which is quite interesting at the moment, because it seems stalled at the moment. And obviously, we've had these worries over growth prospects globally. Mm. Um, particularly out of Asia, where the Delta variant is spreading again. And, and that seems to have worried the market in the last month. Um, but I, 
for me, that's just recovery um, postponed rather than anything else. Uh, and I think that should throw us up some opportunities. Yeah, and you're seeing it sort of opportunities in the UK. I mean, we've obviously had that big slug of IPO money coming in, which is still there. Mm. Well, what's your sort of view on on existing equities in the normal sort of like you're trading? Because uh, there seems to be some quite good sort of opportunities and sectors, particularly if you've got that backdrop of if this is just a temporary phenomenon where there's a bit of sort of like, you know, concern over growth. But frankly, if people do get vaccinated like the UK, then it's a matter of when, not mm. if. Yeah, totally agree with that. I mean, it, it is when not if on the terms of the recovery. Um, the vaccination programs are progressing. I mean, Europe's moving pretty quickly now. I think Europe's mm. got to half of Europe, half the adults in Europe have had both their vaccinations. It's two thirds in the UK now. Um, Asia will catch up um, in due course. And then we're back on to, well, growth's there again. So yeah. I do think the opportunities are being thrown up. Back to your question about IPOs. Naturally, there's been, there's been a lot of IPO activity. Um, it's kind of kind of... It's the natural progression. There's been a lot of M&A companies being taken out, but there's so there's their IPOs to come through for companies to replace the ones being taken out. It does take a long time for the money to come in nowadays, though. These enemies, it's not. It can take up to nine months really for the deals to mm. be completed with all the M, with all the uh, monopolies commission or whatever, uh, and them looking at it. Now, I think that fund managers have very much been focused on a lot of IPO activity. There's been a lot of uh, M&A and secondary issues as well. I think now through the summer, the IPO activity will slow down a lot. There's already signs that that's happening now. And on the back of that, thoughts will return to the existing market and existing equities. Uh, and they and the fund managers will be trawling the market for where stocks have been left a bit unloved and uh, neglected. Uh, well, and we've seen yeah. that, you know, with stocks falling back. Yeah, one area that um, is sort of, a, you know, in that context, which looks pretty much... Uh, sort of unfairly sold off of late is the whole sort of like house building construction area. I mean, we saw the construction, the, the PMIs for um, UK construction coming out at record levels. I think they were sort of mid-60s mm. about a week ago. And likewise, house prices are still sort of like very, very strong. And yes, there might well be that risk of a, a slight sort of um, air pocket due to the house sort of like stamp duty um, holiday ending in June or sort of tapering off. But frankly, what are your views going forward in that whole sort of exercise? Because it seems to be some good opportunities, particularly in the sort of picks and shovels, guys. Yeah, I think across, I, I still love the infrastructure story for yeah. the UK and globally. So, and I've included house builders within that. If you look at the, the big boys like Barrett's have just reported and yes. their forward order books are very good. Yes. The one worry we had, of course, was cost price inflation uh, with raw materials going up. And they're actually saying that house price inflation is covering their cost price inflation. Yeah. Um, so that's that's fine. So margins can be maintained on that basis. So that's good. I did order, see but... also, just on that, actually, Vistry previous week, you know, I think they've got cash. I think was it Barrett said it was about 3 to 4% cost inflation. Yeah. But, I mean, Vistry is obviously incurring the same sort of thing and said actually its house price inflation was higher. So they were mm. sort of like, you know, so I'm with you. The whole house building sector looks well underpinned in that respect. Yeah, totally agree. So I think that's and, and the balance sheets are very strong. And the mm. one thing that that punches the house building sector, if you look back historically over 30, 40 years, is that it's when they go for volume. Mm. And the key thing is these companies aren't back to 2019 volume levels yet. Mm. There is no sign of them going for volume building, whatever the government might want. So yeah. supply may remain constrained. Mortgage rates at the moment are very, very competitive. Yes. So that's another plus for the sector. So you might say that the uh, the uh, stamp holiday duty, uh, holiday, stamp stamp duty holiday, holiday, yeah. holiday is coming off. But look at mortgage rates. They're mm. very, very competitive now. They're in the ones, one percent. I mean, it depends what uh, I think what uh, deposit you've got. But those mm. rates are very competitive. So that's going to help keep the market underpinned. And the picks and shovels, yes, the company supplying those, they should be doing well. I mean, yeah. the big question we've got is RMI and that whole sector. But look at that. You've had some cracking statements. Grafton, Howden, yes. SIG today, which is more infrastructure than RMI, to be honest. But uh, Grafton and Howden are very much RMI. Yeah. They're going to start They're going to start hitting those tough like-for-like -like comparisons as we go through the summer. But the, the, the money is still out there to be spent. Um, we need to be take care about the valuation of some of these companies are on. But... Some of, the, some of the share prices have come back quite a long way. And I think 
stocks like Grafton, I mean, Grafton is a case in point. They sold a big chunk of their business in the UK. And they it's came a building, out of this... It's a building products distributor, I think, in the cross... Yeah, it is, the, yeah. The, the Europe, it's, isn't it? And Europe, yeah. They sold yeah. a big chunk of their merchant business and they came out and said, no need to change forecasts. Yeah. So that tells you the scale of the upgrade. And they've now got a load of cash to go out and spend and to, it on M&A uh, on their business. So... I still think those picks and shovels really are there yeah. and, and, and ones to look at. And two others on the sort of the specialist plantar equipment, Speedy Hire and VP, because I mean yeah. they've got they've they haven't yet quite come back because of the, obviously they've got more exposure on the infrastructure side rather than the straight yeah. house building. But the likes of HS2 and all the big infrastructure products that, that Boris is performing, I mean, should absolutely sort of like you know give those guys a bit of a a bit of a lift over the next two, three, four years. And and, and you talked about sort of like good valuations. I mean, these guys are actually trading at sort of like you know five times EBITDA, which historical terms is very cheap, on subdued mm. earnings expectations. If you, if you then extrapolate it further, there seems to be a good, very good opportunity there. I, I, do you want to have a, a, a pop at those two guys? Yeah, v, VP would be our favourite out of the two. Um, yeah. VP has a, a phenomenal track record of growth, extremely good management. Um, and yes, you're, you're bang on. HS2 is, we've seen it in the materials. Look what they're saying about concrete. HS2 is taking all the concrete in the UK. Well, what's it doing? <laughs> so what's it doing to all the plant hire? See Where's that on my going? wife because she's been building outside. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you get the bill from the builder for the value yeah, of the concrete. Exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah, it's taken, that, that's going to take all the uh, demand, all the supply out of the market. Supply mm. and demand work. Pricing could go up. They're being quite yeah. cautious at the moment, the rental companies, about pricing and saying whether it's going to go up or not. But yes, infrastructure build is going to happen. Yeah. Um, and those companies are going to benefit from it. So yeah. those are very much companies I would alight on as well. Yeah, you've uh, you've definitely hit the, the nail on the head on that one because uh, with pricing, they've been sort of slightly constrained because they've got long term agreements, haven't they, with a mm, lot of yeah, their, their yeah. customers, which will roll off next year. And, yeah. I, and I'm with you. If I was going to choose, I think they're both good. They both work. But if I was going to choose one, you'd go for the, the long term secular um, sort of like you know special more specialist, which is the VP side yeah. of it. Yeah. But they're both they're both they're both worth about a three hundred and seventy million pound market cap trading mm. on similar sort of multiples. Mm. I mean, I ran the numbers just on VP, and their shares are currently trading at about I don't know nine twenty nine thirty etc. But if you just use a modest multiple in a couple of years, this one's going to be well above eleven pounds, twelve pounds, yeah. possibly yeah. even could get to you know if they, it, it, and, and speed if, if you know if you, if you get good return on capital employed hitting, and they could they could easily be sort of like over fifteen quid. So I, I'm with you, good solid sort of business aren't they to uh yeah yeah and i think that's what you want in this market i mean we've got to be we, we have to be cognizant of the fact that and you know, the bull market's been going on for quite a long time now uh and the key is you want to focus on secular growth and you want to focus on the quality management teams yeah. um we've seen some of the recovery or whatever you want to call it reflation stocks go up and then some of them have come back some of them might not bounce back up again, but the quality ones will bounce back up again, I think. And that's the key. Those are the ones to alight on. Those are the companies you want to look at. You now look at yeah. some of the retailers and things like that. They've come, you know, they've come back a bit super dry, back below mm. four quid again. Halfords has come off. We like that one as well. And they had a nice yeah. little announcement yesterday about a software as a service business they're getting into, which is nothing in the share price for that. It's only early yeah. days, but they've already got a US customer for it. So c companies like that, you know, it's the it's the it's the delight of the small cap world. There's plenty of companies there to look at, finding yeah. those nuggets and gems, and, and they will benefit. Yeah, another one was just on that sort of the building theme, which is a sort of picks and shovels, is the uh, premium specialist brick manufacturer, Mittel Michelmers, which thinks mm. the market cap ran about 130. It's quite good because, you know, it's, the, the industry is obviously dominated by three big players, Ipstock, Fortera, and uh, Weinerberger um, mm. from, from Austria. But these guys are actually, I know it's impossible to understand, but you, you, they actually do quality bricks, <laughs> which is which is unusual when you compare it to a breeze block. But they are basically all clay type of, uh, you know, aesthetically pleasing bricks. And what's really interesting about that particular company is that they're also benefiting not only by that huge sort of house building catch up that then the government needs to do sort of 300, 300,000 properties per year. But they're also be benefiting from things like premiumization of your housing. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you've talked about repair and maintenance, but adding new spaces, people wanting better looking houses and yeah. going built. And that's why you sort of like see 
the more higher higher margin, more attractive product products being being put in, and also they're getting a lift from things like recladding, having you know basically from um, from Grenfell and likes with HS two as well for the stations. They want to look good, build to rent, and the yeah. whole and I think the whole again the the whole sort of building cycle it's going to be underpinned by a redevelopment of all the uh, the high streets. Um, and the office space, and you've seen that already in the city, isn't it? So uh, yeah. I agree with you. There's some real opportunities there. I mean, I think with that terms of valuation with Michaelmas, I could see that that, that share double over the next mm. five years. You know, mm. and that still wouldn't be expensive. So um, yeah, I'm with you. Any, any to... yeah, plenty to chew on there. Any any, yeah. any updates from last time? I know Avintraz came out with um, a good sort of trading update. Yeah, they've um, had a good update. They've had a good update. It's continued just good performance, good delivery contract wins yeah. um so i mean the share price has had a good run but i still think there's plenty more to go for there so still you know big fan of that one as a core, a core portfolio holding that one so still yeah. like that one a lot yeah i did see one of your analysts put a sort of like a sum of the parts on it sort of like mm. just, just just for the core businesses which was in about 20 30 percent up etc and i i actually inter- and that was i think that's excluding the um, the magnetica um, small, yeah, it does. Four, yeah, small, yeah, small yeah. four MRI stuff that yeah. you talked about. It was interesting, just as a sort of like when we last spoke, I, I touched base with Christopher Mills, who's the biggest shareholder. Mm, mm, mm. He quite he quite likes that. He's he's a life science expert and knows if there's anybody in the UK um, uh, fund management industry that you're going to defer your judgment to in healthcare and all things medicine. It's Christopher Mills of, of Harvard. Mm. He reckons that business could be worth five pounds or over five pounds on its own the shares are yeah. only four pound twenty <laughs> no, and if, and if own, the existing yeah. some yeah. of the parts is more than four pound twenty you're getting <laughs> that all for free plus the cash mountain as well so it's yeah. definitely something that people have a you know should have a look to i mean the shares have done well but uh another one yeah, more to go for another go one on. you talked about i think was uh, was gresham technologies the um, yes again again i mean it's continued delivery global leader in what they do reconciliation into the big banks, the, big, the global banks. This isn't this isn't just little local banks. This is a global banks, and they're delivering on what they said they're going to do. It's coming back to what we just said. I think look for the winners. Look for the secular growth areas of the, eco- the economy. The managements that have delivered historically. Mm. I mean, just one word that we do need to mention when we talk about what we're seeing with PPI, as you said, CPI, pricing power. You need to be in companies that have yeah. pricing power. We just you need to remember that when you're investing at the moment, always think about pricing bags. If they haven't got it, margins get squeezed and the market's getting I think the market is getting more. It's discriminating more between bad and good, if you get what I mean, um, mm. whereas for, for a period, it's been everything's been rising almost, hasn't it? But I think we're getting to the stage now where there's going to be a lot more kind of differential in performance between the, what's good and what's bad. So the key is to make sure you're in you do identify and do your research to find that to make sure you're in those good ones and yeah. the ones they historically have delivered. Yeah, I must admit from that um, from that Gresham Technologies, they knocked the ball out of the park, didn't they? On light for light mm. revenues, it was up sort of fourteen percent, and uh, yeah. the, the shares are still trading on a modest. If you look forward to two thousand and twenty-two, so around about three times sales for a high recurring revenue, mm. high quality mm. stock that's got pricing power with fantastic customer base and growing with cross sale synergies in the states. I mean, again, you could see that one. You know, not only increasing the multiple over the next three, four years, but also increasing the, uh, you know, the, the the sales by double digits. Yeah. That, that, that could double easily in the next five years. Plenty I, you know. to, it's, yeah, it's plenty to go for. You've got a big market that they're playing in. They're proving they're successful. They've proved they're successful globally. It's the it's what you want from a small cap stock, isn't it? It is, yeah. And then the next month, then, anything of major points? I mean, we've got the Jackson Well, Hole. we've got the summer. It's a summer now, so t- it does get a bit quieter. I would hope that what we're going to see now, we're going to get the attention turned back to the existing market, as it were, away from all the IPO activity. We'll start to get a bit more return to kind of people having the cash to invest in the existing. Because when there's all these IPOs coming, it uses up people's cash. So they don't mm. have the money to buy these stocks when they fall back. Yeah. Um, obviously, people are going to be very focused on inflation. We're not going to get the answer for that in the, in the short term. I mean, even Powell's saying now in the US, the Fed, He's saying that it's going to remain elevated for a period before it falls back. So we're still going to get this kind of push and push and shove on. Is it transitory? Isn't it transitory? And I think that potentially is key for the market. The one thing that we do need to keep an eye on, of course, is COVID and the uh, Delta variant. 
uh, and if there was another variant, um, if that were to get into the US in any in any uh, size, then that could worry the markets. But I think, to be fair, the vaccines are rolling out. The vaccines work. It's all about just keep rolling them out. Um, the growth worry. Well, you, we, China, we haven't mentioned China cut rates by 50 basis points as well. Yeah. Now, that worried people, but then they came out with their export data, trade data uh, earlier in the week, and it was better than expected. Mm. Caveat that, we've got the US, Chinese GDP number tonight. So let's see how that comes out. And uh, assuming that would be a, a good number, then we could see those miners running again, which they, and they've come off a bit as well. So the miners, yeah. if we are, there's areas in the market we should be looking at and uh, to invest in. Uh, and I think there's opportunities being thrown up by what we've seen over the past month. Well, I do now understand why you went to your holiday early, because you can come back and sort of pick up these uh, nice uh, choice stocks, <laughs> you know, for your for your for yours and your clients' uh, funds. So uh, I think we'll cut it there then. Uh, thanks very much for your time again, That's Jamie. That's great. Ter- tremendous insights. And if anybody investor wants to actually sort of follow those stocks, then just hit the button on the relevant website and you'll get all the uh, information coming direct into your impact. So uh, look forward to touching base again in a month's time. Cheers, Jamie. Okay, Paul. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye.